Tonight on Y News. The Angeles City Regional Trial Court orders the detention of police suspects involved in the kidnap and murder of Korean national Ji Ip Ju in Camp Klamet. BNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa orders the dismissal of policemen involved in another case of robbery extortion on Korean nationals in Pampanga. President Rodrigo Duterte orders the creation of an independent commission to investigate Oplan exodus. Some are RTC judges face administrative charges for issuing search warrants against Albuera Mayor Rolando Espinosa Sr. Why News begins now. From the UNTV News and Rescue Command Center, this is Why News. With Angelo Castro III and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. PNP Chief Police Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa confirms that the alias Jerry who was implicated in the kidnapping of Korean Ji Ik Ju is an employee of the National Bureau of Investigation. Leah Ilagan will tell us why. Pero naman tayong source ng SNBI na nag-confirm na talagang NBA asset yun at uh, driver pa ka na isang di director daw doon. So, kinukonfirm naman nila. Elias Jerry, who is allegedly involved in the G. Ikju kidnap slay case, is the driver of a director in the National Bureau of Investigation. This has been confirmed by PNP Chief Police Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa himself. The general says that aside from Elias Jerry, there is another NBI civilian agent and two others who were checking on the work of the alleged kidnap group. May may mga grupo na napasulpot-sulpot eh para nag-check sa trabaho nila para mag-up lang. Hindi lang niya ma-identify kasi iba-ibang sasakyan eh. Sumusulpot lang daw ganun para mag-up nila. AKJ Director Police Senior Superintendent Glenn Dumla revealed yesterday that their first attempt to serve a search warrant at the Grim Funeral Services was preempted as the group from the NBI bit them to the place even without a warrant on hand. Pumunta doon kagad-agad without search warrant. Pumunta sila doon using their parang sinasabi investigative power dahil daw mayroon sensational case. So ang ginawa, kinausap yung sekretarya at kinuha yung inibitahan yung apat na empleyado. That's all. Kaya nga, na-preempt nga, nagkukan uh, na kami noon dahil preempted yung uh, search warrant operation namin. The PNP chief meanwhile notes that although there are members of the PNP and NBI who are involved in the case, the two agencies are cooperating with each other to resolve the issue and to hold the suspects liable and to eventually clean the image of the two agencies. General Bato is convinced that Santa Isabel was working with a big group. Uh, alam na alam kung anong gawin, uh, baka matagal na. Basta itong si Santa Isabel, may kaso na ito dati ng uh, kidnapping doon sa Northern Police District. Uh, Biktimaising isang tinchik, isang Chinese. Meanwhile, Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre has ordered the National Bureau of Investigation to investigate on the possible involvement of an NBI agent in the kidnapping of Korea National Ji Ik Ju. Leia Ilagan, UN TV News and Rescue, Camp Grammy. The Angeles City Regional Trial Court Branch 58 has issued a commitment order as to where SPO3 Ricky Santa Isabel and the rest of police suspects in the G kidnapping case will be detained. Santa Isabel was with SPO4 Roy Villegas when the PNP anti-kidnapping group returned the warrant of arrest to the Angeles City RTC this afternoon. The court approved the request of the two policemen to remain under the custody of the PNP for their safety. <music> Meanwhile, Malacanang has expressed its most sincere apologies to the government and the people of South Korea. Aga Kaakbay will tell us why. We apologize to the South Korean government and people for this irreparable loss. But to commit the full force of the law to ensure that justice is served and not delayed. To the Korean people, please accept our sincerest and deepest regrets. 
The Malacanang has apologized to the government and the people of South Korea for the death of businessman Ji Ik Ju. Presidential spokesperson Ernesto Abella says the Philippine government vows to deliver swift justice on behalf of the Korean national. The official also admits that the killing of G was the result of the Philippine government's deep-rooted problem with corruption. Let's just go back to the president's um, campaign theme to stop crime, corruption, and uh, illegal drugs. And apparently this, is a, this particular situation indicates that uh, there is truly a depth of uh, corruption within the government system. President Duterte has also expressed his condolences to the victim's widow, Choi Kyung Jin. Aga Kakbay, you intervene, and rescue, Malakanyang! PNP Chief Police Director General Ronald De La Rosa orders the Philippine National Police Region 3 to ensure the dismissal from service of officers involved in another rubber extortion of Korean nationals. Grace Cassian will tell us why. The seven policemen involved in another robbery extortion of three Korean nationals are now under the restrictive custody of the PNP Region 3. According to PNP Region 3 Director Police Chief Superintendent Aaron Aquino, the suspects who were in civilian clothes went to the residence of these Koreans who only came to the Philippines for a vacation and to play golf. The policemen entered the victim's house to allegedly conduct operations against supposed illegal online gaming activities of the three victims. The suspects extorted 300,000 pesos from the victims and took all their golf shoes, golf clubs, jewelry, computers, cell phones, and some more cash, among others. Out of fear, the victims opt to report the incident directly to the Korean embassy instead of the Angeles City Police. And indeed, was positive, may nangyari nga sa aming uh, robbery extortion na kinabibilangan ng pitong pulis ng Angeles. Pero sa ngayon, may ina-identify pa kaming isa kasi according to the victims, uh, walo yung pulis na na-involved doon sa robbery extortion na yun. The victims did not file criminal complaint against the suspects, but nevertheless submitted their affidavits before heading back to Korea. The PNP will use the said affidavits to file administrative cases against the seven policemen. Tinawagan ako ni Chief PNP at uh, nagbigay siya ng directive sa akin na siguraduhin na itong pito na ito ay maitapon, ay, ay marilib at matanggal sa serbisyo. The Chief PNP also ordered to have the seven policemen investigated if they're connected to SPO3 Ricky Santa Isabel. Pero most likely may mga, uh, i-check pa natin yung connections nila. Oh, pero local ito doon, mga local ito sa, sa Station 5. The PNP chief earlier said that they will not let any cover-up to happen in favor of police officers involved in illegal activities. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. The Department of the Interior and Local Government, in coordination with the Philippine National Police, will intensify its intelligence gathering on illegal gambling operations in the country. Joyce Balancho will tell us why. Aside from the anti-drug war, the Duterte administration is now keen on focusing its efforts to combat the proliferation of illegal gambling operations across the country. Interior Secretary Ismael Sueno says that this year, the President's Cabinet will discuss measures to solve this problem. At this month, di ba, nag-tawag uh, sa amin yung command conference ng PNP at saka military. So, uh, sinabi niya sa PNP at saka sa military, tulungan niyo kami, tulungan niyo ang PCSO. Dahil sa PCSO, dito galing, manggagaling ang itulong natin sa mga mahihirap. Sueno adds that the Department of Interior and Local Government, in coordination with the Philippine National Police, is now intensifying its intelligence gathering to catch the perpetrators of illegal gambling. During the hearing of the Games and Amusement Committee, Senator Panfilo Laxon stressed the need to amend the charter, being observed by the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office or PCSO, to make it more suited to the present time. Authorities should also clarify reports about local government officials, such as mayors and congressmen, Congressman receiving from revenues of small town lottery or STL. Pero pagdating sa congressional district, wala namang wala namang institutionalized na treasurer yung congressman. So why would a congressional district receive uh, a share from the PCSO? 
Now, again, I'm not against it, but we should find a way to legalize it, you know, to authorize it under the law. Laxo stresses that illegal gambling business continue to operate because of local officials and police personnel protecting them. Even Secretary Sueno admits being bribed by gambling operators. I'm trying to find out who is, uh, who is getting it for me. <laughs> So, at uh, saka tanong niyo, bakit kinukuha mo? Hindi naman, wala na akong utos sa'yo. Laxon's committee will study key legislation to address illegal gambling operations. Joyce Balancho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The office of the Ombudsman filed the necessary cases at the Sandigan Bayan against former PNP Chief Alan Purisima and former SAF Director Hetulio Napeñas over the Mama Sapano encounter. Monokson will tell us why. One day before the second year memorial of the bloody Mama Sapano encounter in Maguindanao, the office of the Ombudsman has formally filed the cases against personalities involved in the operation that killed 44 members of the PNP Special Action Force at the Sandigan Bayan. This include former PNP Chief Alan Purisima and former PNP Staff Director Getulio Napeñas. The two accused will face graft and usurpation of authority cases in the graft court. Based on the complaint, the active participation of Purisima in Oplan Exodus, despite him under preventive suspension, is a clear violation of the PNP chain of command. Napeñas is also described as Purisima's cohort for taking orders from a suspended PNP chief without the knowledge and approval of OIC PNP Leonardo Espina. Purisima and Napeñas previously filed a motion for reconsideration, but the Ombudsman denied the motion due to lack of merit. Meanwhile, former staff director Napeñas guarantees that he will cooperate in the hearing of his case. <laughs> The two officials were removed from service after the incident. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Sandigan Bayan. Former Board of Inquiry member, now PNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa, hopes that all involved in Oplan Exodus must be held liable, even if they are former high-ranking government officials. Le Ilagan will tell us why. Ang hindi lang talaga na this doon is uh, pang, yung papanagutin yung may sala kung sino yung mga involved doon. Kung nakasuhan na ba, uh, doon to kung may lumabas na waran o uh, kung nahuli na ba. This was the statement of Police Chief Police Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa adding that the Philippine National Police is ready to arrest all suspects in the bloody Mama Sapano operations should a warrant of arrest is issued. De La Rosa adds that based on the report on the Board of Inquiry that investigated the operation in which he was once a member, aside from former PNP Chief, Police Director General Alan Purisima and Police Director Hetulio Napeñas, then President Benigno Aquino III should also be held liable in the encounter. Kung tutusin, lahat, lahat doon dapat uh, managot eh. Yung recommendation namin sa, sa BUI, di ba? Hanggang to the highest na official na uh, involved doon sa operasyon na eh, yun, dapat managot. That includes Dino? Hindi dapat, hanggang doon sa Presidente dapat, di ba? No, yun, yun man yung recommendation namin, di ba? Now that President Duterte intends to reopen the case, he is hoping that no one will be spared even if they are former high-ranking government officials. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, uh, I don't know uh, hindi ko lang ng instruction ni Presidente ko. Alam ko, DOJ naman yung utusan niya dyan eh. Kasi yung polis, ang parte ng polis tapos naman. Kung may lalabas na warrant, eh, yung polis tutulong doon sa paghahabol sa mga suspect. Oplan Exodus, which was also called Time on Target Operation, was launched on January 25, 2015 against international terrorist Sul Kifli bin Hir alias Marwan. It was where 44 members of the Special Action Force were killed. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. President Rodrigo Duterte will form an independent commission to investigate the failed operation behind the death of the SAF-44. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. 
the first time before the commemoration of the second year of the Bloody Mama Sapano encounter, relatives of the fallen SA 44 were invited to Malacanang to personally meet President Rodrigo Duterte. President Duterte will form an independent commission composed of seven members to investigate the events behind the Oplan exodus that led to the killing of the 44 PNP Special Action Force members in Mama Sapano, Maguindanao on January 25, 2015. And uh, I will create a commission of seven. Okay, na agraba commission no panahon ni Marco. I will appoint men of integrity and honor. And uh, kung tanggapin nila, then I'll choose mostly for the justices of the Supreme Court. Uh, maybe a few of the from the civilians. The president also orders PNP Chief Director General Ronald De La Rosa to process and finish before the end of January 2017 all the necessary documents for the awarding of the Medal of Valor to all fallen SAF 44. President Duterte says this is the only highest award he can give to recognize the gallantry of the policemen who died for the country. Some relatives of the SAF 44 expressed their grievances against the past administration, which failed to deliver its promises for the bereaved families. They are calling for justice and believe that it will be delivered through the Duterte administration. Of the SAF 44 troopers who died, why only two of them were given, were awarded the Medal of Valor? What is the criteria of dying in the field of battle for one? to be awarded that medal. How about the, the other 42 troopers? Did they not die fighting? Or was it, or is it because there was no one to tell their story? Meanwhile, President Duterte promises to hold former President Benigno Noynoy Aquino III and former PNP Chief Director General Alan Purisima responsible for their actions. The President says former President Aquino as well as Purisima should admit their wrongdoings in the Mama Sapanu incident. Aside from this, President Duterte also wants to know why the Aquino administration did not disclose the Central Intelligence Agency or CIA of the United States of America was behind the Oplan exodus. Let it, it be brought to the open. It was an American adventure with uh, the cooperation of some and apparently with your blessing. Sinabi mo, Pawis na pawis ka sa TV. And you were so stressed and I said, uh, kasalanan ko. But it is not enough. Sabihin ito ang Pilipino, sabihin mo sa akin kung paano ka nagkasala. At anong ginawa ninyo, bakit you fed the soldiers to the lion's den to be eaten by death. In the end, President Duterte also promises to declare January 25 every year as Day of Remembrance for the heroism of the gallant fallen SAF 44. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. Meanwhile, the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority is studying the possibility of giving additional exemptions from the existing number coding scheme. John Nano is back to tell us why. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA eyes to accept applications anew for those who want to get exemptions from the number coding scheme. This following the expansion of the no window hours policy which runs until July. To date, there are thousands of applications sent to the MMDA but are yet to be approved. MMDA officer in charge General Manager Tomas Orbos admits having difficulty determining who among the applicants deserve to have an exemption. It's not within our expertise to know which ones are valid or not and which ones are needed or not. That's Instead of an individual application for the exemption, the MMDA plans to just talk to institutions and establishments who have the capability to determine who deserve an exemption from the number coding scheme. Hindi ko usapin ko na lang ko yung media institution. Tulad doon sa medical, hindi yung hospital na lang magsabi sa akin sino dapat yung bigyan ng exemptions rather than yung doktor mismo. It can be noted that the MMDA temporarily suspend the issuance of exemption for the number coding scheme last January 21, 2017. The agency meanwhile plans to set stricter policy in issuing exemption to ensure that those deserving will be the one to receive it. 
For now, the MMDA will study the plan first. Afterwards, it will set a schedule for the reopening of the application. Joe Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. Next in Y News. Members of the House of Representatives seek to penalize acts of bullying and discrimination of marginalized or powerless members of society. And some are RTC judges who face administrative charges for issuing questionable search warrants against Albuera Mayor Rolando Espinosa Sr. and inmate Raul Ya. Y News will be right back. Philippines urges countries outside Southeast Asia not to use the region as a proxy for their rivalry. Marge Navarro will tell us why. As the host to the leaders of the US, China, Japan, Russia, and India, we will have to remind our friends, firmly if necessary, not to use ASEAN as a proxy for their rivalry. We will reaffirm the unity and solidarity of ASEAN amidst this emerging superpower competition. This was the statement of Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana amid power struggle between Washington and Beijing over nations in the Southeast Asian region. The Philippines is the chairman of the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN this year and will host its annual meetings, some of which are joined by outside powers including China and the United States. The issue of territorial disputes in the South China Sea has in recent years emerged as a source of friction in the bloc. Some ASEAN countries have taken positions on the issue in line with China, while others have been more suspicious of China's assertiveness reflecting the United States. Lorenzana told delegates from more than 20 countries at the security conference in Singapore that outside powers should not pursue their competition in the region. ASEAN is drawing up a code of conduct in the hope of making sure all claimants follow legal and diplomatic processes in settling territorial disputes. We have been trying to uh, craft a code of conduct for the past many years but we haven't been successful. And we will try to do that this year. Maybe uh, uh, start some more, uh, some more effort into uh, having this code of conduct because uh, the tension in that part of the world is, is rising and we don't want that to happen. You know? Especially so that uh, about five trillion worth of uh, goods pass to that uh, area every year. China has built several artificial islands in the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines, which an arbitral tribunal last year ruled unlawful. With billions of dollars of potential Chinese trade and investment at stake, the Philippines has a difficult balancing act in upholding its sovereignty claims while staying on the better terms with historic rival China. March Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The House of Representatives is expected to discuss the controversial death penalty bill in plenary next week. Albay Representative Edsel Lagman, who opposes the proposal, says the Committee on Rules is currently discussing the bill. In line with this, the opposition bloc has once again called on the House leadership to let lawmakers from the supermajority vote according to their conscience. We are calling on the leadership of the supermajority to allow a conscience vote, not to insist on a party or pressure vote. Members of the House of Representatives want to penalize acts of bullying and discrimination of marginalized or powerless members of society. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. The Subcommittee on Prosecutorial Reforms has begun discussions on the controversial anti-bullying bill. Under the House Bill No. 803 or penalizing the crime of bullying of the marginalized, oppressed, and powerless. Repeated physical or verbal abuses against a person because of his or her political beliefs, religious affiliation, gender, or status in life shall incur heavy penalty. 
The proposed bill aims to particularly protect persons who are in the marginalized sector and considered oppressed and powerless. Despite this, there are questions on the provisions of the bill which may be unconstitutional, specifically on freedom of speech and expressions. Any statute that would, on its face, infringe on freedom of expression is presumed to be unconstitutional. But this is repeated, directed at that person, and then that person suffers from you know, severe anxiety or stress as a result of that uh, speech. No? Other Solons also question the term and the meaning of bullying as this has similarity with the existing provision of Republic Act No. 10627 or the Anti-Bullying Act of 2013 on students in the elementary and secondary level. According to the Commission on Human Rights, bullying has serious effects on the victims. As bullying is painful and humiliating, its adverse effects can lead to more serious concerns such as suicide and violent behavior. Under the proposed bill, whoever violates this law may be imprisoned up to six months with fines reaching up to 100,000 pesos. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. The regional trial court judges who issued a search warrant against Mayor Rolando Espinosa are now facing administrative cases. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. The Supreme Court has released the result of its investigation into the questionable search warrants issued in the police operation in Leyte Sub-Provincial Jail last November where Albuera Mayor Rolando Espinosa was killed along with inmate Raul Yap. The Office of the Court Administrator finds Judge Tarcelo Sabari Jr. of Basay Summer RTC Branch 30 administratively liable for issuing search warrants against Espinosa and Yap. A certain Judge Janet Cabalona of Calbiga Summer RTC was also found liable for the same actions. Before Espinosa was killed, Judge Cabalona issued search warrants against two detainees in a government penal facility who are also involved in illegal drugs ended up dead. The investigation also reveals that Judge Carlos Arguelles of Bye Bye City RTC Branch 14 was liable for not acting immediately on Espinosa's request to be transferred to another facility due to threats to his life. Because of this, the Supreme Court has elevated the fact-finding investigation to administrative case. Wherefore, the instant administrative matter is hereby redocketed as a regular administrative case against Judges Carlos O. Arguelles of the RTC of Bay Bay Leyte, Branch 14, Tarcelo A. Sabare Jr. of the RTC of Basay Summer, Branch 30, and Janet M. Cabalona of the RTC of Calbiga Summer, Branch 33. Judges Arguelles, Sabare, and Cabalona are directed to comment on the observations of the court in this resolution within 10 days from receipt of the aforesaid documents from the Office of the Court Administrator. The case was referred to Associate Justice Gabriel Ingles of Court of Appeals Cebu City for investigation. He is expected to submit his report and recommendations within 90 days. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Laila de Lima has filed a petition asking the Court of Appeals to issue a temporary restraining order and stop the proceedings on her drug-related cases. Four complaints against de Lima are now submitted for resolution before the Department of Justice. The Senator also asked the Appellate Court to annul the preliminary investigations conducted by the DOJ and to order the transfer of the cases to the Office of the Ombudsman. Dilima has been insisting that DOJ has no jurisdiction over her cases and that President Duterte and Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre have already prejudged her alleged involvement in the illegal drug trade. The cases were filed against Dilima for her alleged complicity in illegal drugs activities inside the new Bolivid prisons and for allegedly receiving millions of money from Bolivid drug lords. The Intelligence Service of the Armed Forces of the Philippines has issued a certification saying that Lt. Col. Ferdinand Marcelino is authorized to conduct anti-drug operations until he was supposedly arrested in Santa Cruz, Manila in January last year. 
The certification was issued by ESAF Chief Brigadier General Ronald Villanueva and was submitted to Manila Regional Trial Court handling Marcelino's drug case. It said that even after his assignment at ESAF, Marcelino continued to provide vital information and collaborate with the NBI and other law enforcement agencies to support their anti-drugs efforts. Former AFP Chief of Staff, retired General Jesse Deliosa also wrote to Judge Daniel Villanueva attesting to Marcelino's quest to fight drug syndicates. Marcelino was arrested along with Chinese informant Yan Yi Shu after failing to produce a mission order authorizing him to conduct operations in a townhouse in Santa Cruz, Manila, which was found to be a clandestine Shabu laboratory. The Bureau of Internal Revenue is in a quandary on how to fill the vacancies which are more than half of its current manpower. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. It is a great challenge for the Bureau of Internal Revenue on how to fill its own demand of human resource. BIR Commissioner Cesar Dulay reveals that they only have 9,000 personnel which translate to less than a half of their supposed force. If we can only fill up the more or less 10,000 vacancies in this uh, agency, then we would be able to work more and have more people to, to help us. And to attract competitive applicants, high salary is a must. BIR says a certified public accountant now in the Bureau is just receiving around 14,000 pesos which is far from what that profession receives in a private company. We have to recognize that the only way we can hire the best of the best is increase our salaries. And this is one of the thrusts of this administration. Hiring personnel would take a big role in achieving the BIR's target collection for 2017, which amounts to 1.829 trillion pesos. This is 16% higher than the target collection in 2016. 26 out of the 27-point priority program of the Bureau are from the previous administration. Some of these are the Oplan Cantado that aims to close the unregistered businesses and non-paying tax establishments and the rate or the run after tax evaders. We are quite bullish in terms of our uh, outlook for 2017. There are bills now filed in the Congress for tax reform packages that will lower personal income taxes. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The local government of Laguna believes there is still a chance to save Laguna Lake if the canceled dredging project pushes through. Ray Pilayo will tell us why. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources and Laguna Lake Development Authority are set to remove gigantic fish cages in Laguna Lake next month. However, the mayor of Binyan suggests carrying out the dredging project as well to save marine resources in the area. It is the better alternative. Idredge ang Laguna Lake ng unti-unti. Between siguro 3 to 5 billion. 3 to 5 years na kontrata. Bakit? Hindi pwedeng buuin na ura-urada mabilisan sa loob ng isang taon ay idredge ang Laguna Lake. Hindi po pwede. Mamamatay po ang, ang, mga, ang, ang, ang mga yamang dagat. Ang mga isda po mamamatay po dyan. Bakit po? Ang Laguna Lake ngayon ay parang isang malaking kanal. The Magila also wants to close down the factories and other structures nearby that cause pollution in the lake. 80% daw ay nanggagaling domestic waste ang 80%. Kasi hinayaan natin ang mga tao na tumira sa tabing lawa. At hindi lang tabi, sa lawa mismo. Naglagay lang sila ng mga stilts. Stilts, nilagay nila, nagbahay sila doon. Parang sulu. The dredging project was approved under a royal administration but was cancelled by her successor, former President Benigno Aquino III, and replaced it with the Laguna Lake Mega Dike Expressway project. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Asia-Pacific Alliance for Disaster Management Philippines believes that cooperation between the public and private sectors as well as civil society groups is necessary to an effective response during times of calamities. Brian DePaz will tell us why. 
During today's International Symposium 2017 hosted by the Asia-Pacific Alliance for Disaster Management Philippines, various sectors have agreed with the idea that cooperation between the public and private sectors as well as civil society groups is important in disaster response. The DSWD is calling on you to partner with us with these principles, framework, and goals. Let us work collectively to help everyone and anyone in need regardless of their culture, age, gender, and even affiliation. We could not have done what we did uh, without partnerships. And, you know, we needed to create this uh, sort of uh, platform for collaboration with people, business community, government, NGOs, international agencies, international NGOs. Several members of the private sector have also expressed support for the government's programs in addressing calamities. PCCI is one of the leading organizations in making sure that the private sector will become aware and engaged in BRRM program in initiative of the government. Meanwhile, the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council or NDRRMC reports that nine individuals were killed, ten were injured, and two remain missing due to bad weather condition in several provinces in Visayas and Mindanao. More than 17,000 families were evacuated in the regions of Visayas and Mindanao due to massive floods. NDRRMC says more than 100,000 families or more than 500 individuals in the said regions were affected by the calamity. More than 4,000 families, meanwhile, are still in evacuation centers. Currently, more than 400 areas in Visayas and Mindanao are still experiencing massive floods. The relief operation of the DSWD together with the armed forces is ongoing in provinces affected by the calamity. Brian De Paz, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Over 400 residents in Barangay San Juan, Betis, Pampanga, thank UNTV and members Church of God International. Leslie Longbowen will tell us why. UNTV and members Church of God International visited one of the poorest barangays in Betis, Pampanga. Due to financial incapacity, residents in Barangay San Juan Bautista could not buy medicines and consult a doctor. Among them is Lourdes Manguera. That's why she grabbed the opportunity to avail the free medical mission rendered by UNTV and MCGI. Brad Ellie at saka kay Brad Daniel Rason, maraming salamat kahit na hindi ko kayo nakakarap ng personal, maraming salamat at maraming taong kayong natutulungan dito sa medical mission na to. Maraming salamat. 77-year-old Fernanda also availed of free medicines and eyeglasses. Ito lang ako nakatingin dito. First time na kalala sa medical mission. Yeah, ito po. Betis is part of the early history of Members Church of God International. It is among the areas in Pampanga where Brother Eli Soriano first preached. Memorable itong barrio na ito. May mga nakasalamuha din si Brother Eli sa mga tao rito, lalo na mga matatanda. Kaya siyang napakabuting pagkakataon na makarating dito yung medical mission na pinangungunahan ni Brother Eli at saka ni Kuya Daniel. Ito, naisagawa po ngayon dito. Iyong mismong manggagamot ang dinala sa barrio. Ito, napakalaking tulong ito sa mga tao rin. A total of 425 people benefited from the free medical, optical, dental and other services like free haircut and legal consultation. The barangay captain of San Juan Bautista is exceedingly thankful that for the first time, a group expressed concern and provided medical attention to the residents in their area. Uh, first, first time lang. First time lang. Uh, sa medical mission. Kaya nagpapasama nga ako kay Juan Daniel eh, sa Antwion TV at kay Brad Eli. Nagpapasama ako sa kanila. Uh, maraming maraming salamat sa uh, ang dating daan. Leslie Longbowen for Servisyong Kasang Bahay. Japan moves to change the law to allow Emperor Akihito's abdication. Danny Tixon will tell us why. Emperor Akihito's unprecedented decision to give up the throne came last August when he announced that his age might make it hard to fulfill his duties, a remark that sparked sympathy among many people and triggered a debate 
within the government on his possible retirement. For this reason, a panel of experts leading the discussion on the abdication of Japanese Emperor Akihito has presented a summary of opinions to Japan Prime Minister Shinzo Abe on Monday. The work is set to pave the way for the emperor to abdicate in a step unprecedented for two centuries. Currently, Japanese law does not allow an emperor to abdicate, but legislative changes are being planned to allow the octogenarian emperor to do so. However, many touch topics, such as his title and duties, remain to be settled before the monarch can retire. The summary includes points such as preventing an arbitrary retirement that could trigger easy abdication for future emperors and the possibility of placing a regent to work on behalf of the aging emperor. The Japanese Emperor is defined in the post-war constitution as a symbol of the state and of the unity of the people, but has no political power. Abe's conservative base have also voiced worry that the abdication will trigger debate about allowing a woman to become an emperor. Once Akihito steps down, a new imperial era will commence to replace the current Hese, meaning achieving peace, which began on January 8, 1989, the day he ascended the throne. Danny Tigzon, UNTV News and Rescue, Tokyo, Japan. The last ship to take part in the almost three-year search for flight MH370 returns to a port in Australia. The Nabascon will tell us why. The largest underwater search in history was officially suspended last week after nearly three years of scouring the ocean floor using cutting-edge technology in search of the missing MH370. After a brief tour of the ship, Fugro docked just south of Perth in West Australia, the last ship to return from a 120,000 square kilometer section of the southern Indian Ocean. Officials from Australia, Malaysia and China visited the ship and discussed the impact of suspending the biggest underwater search in history. Officials praised the crew at the center of the massive search for MH370. This has been an extraordinary search effort and it's been in some of the most inhospitable oceans in the world. Uh, there have been occasions during the underwater search where sea states in excess of 20 metres have been experienced by the crew. They told us the, the difficulty uh, they face uh, in the deep sea waters. Uh, sometimes if in four days they have to face high wind of strong wind of 140 km per hour continuously for four days and they can't uh, operate in that kind of bad weather. MH370 disappeared in 2014, shortly after taking off from Kuala Lumpur bound for Beijing with 239 people on board. Australia led a massive search effort that failed to find the aircraft, despite the discovery of several pieces off the coast of Mozambique and Reunion Island. After touring the ship, the Malaysian minister planned on meeting with representative from a group of family members of the victims on board MH370, who have repeatedly urged officials from all three countries to continue the underwater search. Our thoughts and prayer will always be with the family members and the loved ones of those on board MH370. Having not found uh, the aircraft does not indicate failure. Work will continue in relation to uh, further analysis of data. If there's any more debris comes forward, we'll work with our Malaysian counterparts uh, in assessing uh, debris of interest. Nina Bascon, UNTV News and Rescue, Melbourne, Australia. The World Health Organization urges health authorities around the world to stop up reporting of bird flu cases. Jovic Bermas will tell us why. As required by the international health regulations, all countries must detect and report human cases promptly. We cannot afford to miss the early signals. 
The World Health Organization or WHO has urged all countries to monitor closely outbreaks of deadly avian influenza in birds and poultry and to report promptly any human cases that could signal the start of a flu pandemic. Different strains of bird flu have been spreading across Europe and Asia since last year, leading to large-scale slaughtering of poultry in certain countries and some human deaths in China. The world is better prepared for the next influenza pandemic, but not at all well enough. I am asking all countries to keep a close watch over outbreaks of avian influenza in birds and related human cases. The rapidly expanding geographical distribution of these outbreaks and the number of virus strains currently co-circulating have put the big toe on high alert. Chan explained that the new H5N6 strain causing severe outbreaks in Asia was created by gene swapping among four different viruses. In China, there have been seasonal epidemics of H7N9 infections in humans since 2013 up now to more than 1,000 cases of which nearly 39% proved deadly. Since last December, there has been a sudden and steep increase in human cases of H7N9 and the WHO has not been able to rule out limited human-to-human -human spread in two clusters of human cases, although no sustained spread has been detected thus far. Under the international health regulations, a binding legal instrument, WHO's 194 member states are required to detect and report human cases promptly. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue, Europe. Paris drivers are asked to display color-coded stickers on their cars. June Garin will tell us why. On Monday, Paris introduced a new traffic restriction scheme using color-coded stickers in a bid to improve air quality after the French capital has faced a series of spikes in pollution levels. Large parts of France experience high levels of ultrafine and health-harming particles emitted by road traffic and in particular diesel engines. The stickers allow police to control which vehicles can circulate in the city center. Up until now, Paris had banned cars from circulation based on whether license plates ended with odd or even numbers. But authorities hope this new scheme will allow them to adopt restrictions to air pollution threats. Each driver needs to order their sticker online. It categorizes their vehicle according to its age, the emissions it produces, and the energy source it uses. The idea is that the less polluting a vehicle, the more freedom a driver will have in circulating in the French capital. Police in the south of Paris were stopping drivers on Monday, mainly to inform them about the new scheme. Ils ont quelques difficultés à l'obtenir, mais malgré tout, ils nous présentent un justificatif pour la commande de leur vignette. Donc nous sommes depuis ce matin indulgents envers les automobilistes. Je ne savais pas qu'il y avait un nouveau système en fait. Donc je le découvre, on vient de me l'apprendre, donc je comprends qu'il faut que j'achète une vignette et que... De toute façon, je suis autorisée à circuler aujourd'hui avec mon véhicule, donc euh, tout va bien pour moi. Mais bon, je connaissais pas ce principe. France has faced several episodes of high pollution levels in recent years. French health authorities ask school children to stay indoors and for individuals to abstain from any physical outdoor activities during spikes. La pollution se sent physiquement, vraiment, que j'ai des enfants en bas âge et que je le vois, je le vois à leur peau, à leurs cheveux, que c'est perceptible et je trouve ça extrêmement dommage que dans une ville dite lumière, Paris, on n'arrive pas à régler ce problème-là, ça me semble lunaire. Paris Air Watchdog Air Paris extended their high pollution warning until at least Tuesday in France. June Garin, UNTV News and Rescue, Paris, France. The New England Patriots takes on the Atlanta Falcons at Super Bowl 2017. Meanwhile, former world number one Tiger Woods announces his comeback. Aga Akbay will tell us why. In golf, former world number one Tiger Woods is all set for a comeback to the PGA Tour from an injury. 
Woods, who was not able to play due to back pains for the past 15 months, will launch his official return at the January 26-29 Farmers Insurance Open at Torrey Pines in California. This is, this is a very special place and for to come back here, I'm really looking forward to it. As far as the state of my game, I'm excited about playing this week. Uh, I feel like I'm playing well. Uh, I just need to get some term of rounds under, under my belt. The 41-year-old American has not played an official money event since August 2015. In cycling, after four days of fierce biking in the mountains surrounding Stad, Switzerland, Nicola Rohrbach and Katrin Luhmann, the pair from Switzerland came out victorious to win the Snow Bike Festival race. The race played out over four stages, finished with the home favorites proving popular winners in both men's and women's categories. In the men's race, Rohrbach dominated from the start, winning the first stage and then never looked back. In the women's race, it was a Swiss top three with Lumen holding off Esther Seuss into second and Cornelia Hag into third. And in football, the New England Patriots defeated Pittsburgh Steelers 36-17 in the American Football Conference Championship on Sundays, ensuring a ticket to the Super Bowl. The Patriots, who beat the Green Bay Packers 44-21 earlier on Sunday, will face the NFC champion Atlanta Falcons in the National Football League's showpiece on February 5 at NRG Stadium, Houston, Texas. New England will be making a National Football League record ninth appearance in the Super Bowl looking for their fifth championship. Aga Akba, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. 126 students gathered to compete in the 97th National Schools Press Conference 2017 in Pagadian City, Zamboanga del Sur. Aileen Taklo will tell us why. 126 students gathered to compete in the 97th National Schools Press Conference 2017 in Pagadian City, Zamboanga del Sur. This is the pilot category of the NSPC in the field of TV broadcasting. The participants from 18 regions across the country will compete in the TV script writing and broadcasting. The student participants say they have prepared for the contest through various trainings. Ang pagsali po kasi sa National Schools Press Conference, hindi po talaga basta-basta. So, gumagawa ko kami, before kami pumunta dito, gumawa kami ng mga trainings. Uh, dahil po yun sa aming prayers at sa motivations po and inspirations at saka po pag-practice po araw-araw. Aside from TV broadcasting, the groups will also compete in the category of radio script writing and broadcasting, collaborative desktop publishing and online publishing contest. The individual category include editorial writing, news writing, feature writing, sports writing, editorial cartooning, copy reading and headline writing, photojournalism and science and technology writing. Meanwhile, among the judges is our Kasang Bahai and reporter Aiko Miguel. Miguel was delighted because aside from being one of the judges, this is also her first time to visit Mindanao, particularly the region of Zamboanga. Sa panguna po ng Kuya Daniel na nagturo po sa atin when it comes to TV broadcasting and journalism, nakakatuwa rin po yung mga feedback ng mga tao dito dun sa pag-tour namin. Kasi sabi nila na nanonood sila ng UNTV, kilala nila yung UNTV, and alam nila na ang, kumbaga, ang legacy ng UNTV is news and rescue at saka public service. The awarding of the winning region or school will be tomorrow. Aileen Taklob, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Those are the reasons behind the news, January 24, 2017. I am Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Berlin Basingan. Because we need to know. We will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why News?